Welcome back everybody. I'm here in the garage because we're getting packed up and we're heading down towards Lamar, Colorado, about 180, 190 miles to the southeast of here. My good friend Cameron has invited us down for the third straight year to hunt antelope, the ghost of the prairie on the high plains on his family's property and I can't wait. I have two doe tags and hopefully we'll get some meat back in the freezer. Of course, I am a meat hunter and that's how I started here on YouTube about 15 years ago as the Rocky Mountain Meat Hunter chronicling my exploits as an elk hunter, mule deer hunter, pronghorn hunter, etc. and show you why we do it, why the meat is so important to us. We, we process it, we bring it from the field to the table. So hopefully I can bring you from start to finish and lightly touch on each of those subjects and God willing we'll end with a delicious meal on the Blackstone Griddle. I'm heading to Monty's house, but they're busy loading up cattle. So we couldn't hunt this morning and we're getting a late start. We're not allowed to start hunting till around 10 a.m. And if that's not enough pressure, it's also gonna be a really hot day. We got us a doe, uh, I don't know, maybe 250 yards or so. We're out with Monty and we found like six or seven of them. Uh, they were in a big group. We took the shot. I got the first one. We're going to go ahead and get this one gutted out. Praise the Lord and pass the pronghorn. We still got a few hours of daylight. We're going to throw this whole antelope in the cooler on ice and try to see if we can harvest another one here before dark. Another tarantula. Whoa. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Speedy guy. Snickers and Monty. <laughs> Say hi, Levi. Aaron's back there and Natalie's back there somewhere too. Where are you at, Natalie? There she is, trying to make a play on some does. We'll see, we're out the side by side. Doing whatever we can to see if we can get close to these does. Oh my, Monty dropped me off and I hid behind some... Uh, Let's go get Kevin. All right, I hid behind some sagebrush and uh, we're coming over right now to see if I can Recover her, man, one shot, went down. Praise the Lord and pass the pronghorn, pronghorn number two. Here we are, we're heading back to Monty's ranch, Cameron's here. Um, we got Monty and the kids on the tailgate of the truck back there. Praise the Lord and pass the pronghorn. Speed goat, ghost to the prairie. High Plains Houdini. So as you can see, a very successful hunt. This is boned out and trimmed pure organic Colorado pronghorn meat. My wife and I spent the last two days cleaning, deboning, and trimming out all the meat. So I put some backstrap steaks in the freezer along with some roast, some large chunks of the rear quarters. So after my wife spent the last two days cleaning this meat out, trimming it out, we'll grind it up, and this will all become hamburger, 
in various types of sausage, breakfast sausage, summer sausage, etc. Wild game such as deer, elk, antelope, moose, etc. is very lean, like almost all protein, not a lot of fat. So you need to add some type of a fat to this if you want it to stick together when you're cooking it. So if you want to make a hamburger patty, for instance, you need to add beef fat. And if I'm making breakfast sausage, which I will be here shortly, I need to add some pork fat to it. So I'll add 20% or so pork shoulder as well. That'll allow me to make those breakfast sausage patties. And this is beef fat right here. I picked it up at my butcher shop. This is thick sliced bacon. I'm following a recipe here that a friend of mine from a Wild Game Seasonings company gave to me several years ago. So shout out to Brian if you're watching. And uh, he likes to do 80% wild game with 10% beef fat and 10% bacon. So this is what it looks like before we put it in the grinder. And in to the grinder. And then I can break out my sausage stuffer. I can use this to fill bags with loose ground meat or to press out burger patties. And in case you're wondering, yes, my hands are clean. They are sanitary. And another trick of the trade, another little tool I picked up over the years, this is a rapid hamburger patty maker that goes on my sausage stuffer. And off to the freezer with our ground bags and our patties. Sheesh! Okay, it's actually two days later. We're just about done processing all the antelope meat. I actually have summer sausage over there in the smoker and these are the patties. This is the way I froze them. The 80-20 or the 80-10-10 antelope patties. This is how I fell in love with Blackstone Griddling. 10 years ago when they sent me the first griddle, I went out in the garage with the door open and I cooked elk patties just like this with sauteed onions we're pretty much gonna recreate that recipe right here right now i want to show you why or at least the number one reason why i am a rocky mountain big game hunter i'm doing burgers i want a killer sear so got that blackstone griddle on high today we're using avocado oil i love avocado oil use a lot of avocado oil and extra virgin olive oil as well and of course one thing i like to do is rub oil uniformly into, is that even a word? I, I had to look it up one time. It's uniformly a word, but rub it into the griddle all the way across so that it, it is uniformly, <laughs> that is equally oiled, something like that. Alrighty, and look what just arrived in the mail from Blackstone. The mother load of brand new seasonings. Have not even tried them yet, but I saw this right here, the High Plains Steak. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of that avocado oil on top of the patties, maybe rub it in a little bit, and we'll hit that up with that brand new Blackstone High Plains steak. I haven't even tried it yet, but I'm pretty darn confident that it's gonna taste good because Blackstone makes good stuff. On the freezer paper, these are 20% mm, frozen. These are in the refrigerator pushed to the back and they're actually touching the freezer. So here we go. Seasoning side down. Just like that. So I'll go ahead and we'll put a little bit of oil and seasoning on that second side as well. And just like I did with my very first Blackstone griddle and those elk steaks a decade ago, we're going down with minced onion. We've got a beautiful brioche bun, just like Gordon Ramsay recommends for burgers. And of course, I only follow Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> rules for cooking. All right, so a little bit of uh, mayo down there. Shout out to Blackstone Betty for teaching me that trick years ago. It just gets you a better toast on your bread.
onion's looking good and the burgers are cooking along. Let's go ahead and toast those brioche buns. So straight down, I might even give them a press. And we're gonna do two kinds of cheese on these. So we're gonna go down with pepper jack and cheddar. Let's check out those buns. Woo look at this, look at this. Toasted to perfection. Every time on the Blackstone, been saying it for a decade. Look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and add those beautiful looking sauteed and seasoned onions on top of the cheese on each patty. If you don't like onions, just don't add onions. A good trick if you wanna melt the cheese, a little bit of water down on the griddle top. Close that hood or use a basting cover. And you can dress these any way you want. I think today we'll just put a little bit of mayo and I pulled this out of the pantry, check it out. Uh, sandwich pal, jalapeno mustard. Let's do it, let's give it a try. A little bit of jalapeno mustard. You can go ketchup, whatever you wanna do, avocado, I don't care. And I picked up a little bag of shredded iceberg lettuce at Walmart. Look at this cheese. Look at the cheese, look at that cheese. It's amazing. Couldn't ask for anything better. And I'm gonna use some pickle today. Sometimes I like pickle on my burger. Sometimes I don't, but today I do. And the crowns on top. Take a look at that. Folks, this is a Colorado pronghorn burger. Antelope burger is what we commonly call them. Let's give it a try. So good. I couldn't show you in this video how much care we put into processing our wild game. It takes us a couple of days picking out hairs, cutting out silver skin. There is nothing in there but 100% pure organic Colorado pronghorn meat. And of course I added the beef fat and the pork to make the patties as well. So good. And that toasted bun, the sauteed onions, it reminds me, it takes me back, literally takes me back to nine and a half years ago. The very first time I ever cooked a burger cooked anything on the Blackstone griddle. So these are outstanding. I mean, folks, look at this. They taste even better than they look and they look absolutely out of this world. I hope you enjoyed coming along for this glimpse into what I do as a Rocky Mountain, as a Western big game hunter. Let me know in the comments down below if you come from a hunting family. Maybe you grew up hunting white-tailed deer like I did in Pennsylvania. Or maybe your family fish and you like to do a lot of fishing or cook a lot of fish. Let me know down below. Let me know if you want to get into that kind of lifestyle and let me know down below what you want to see in a future video. I've got upcoming elk hunts and uh, white-tailed bug hunts as well. I want to bring you guys along and girls along for more and more fun things in the, in the future. Let me know if you want to see even a more in-depth look at the processing in the future. How we take a quarter of meat from an animal and actually turn it into sausage or burgers. But let me know down below and definitely we appreciate thumbs up, comments and all that stuff. Hey, uh, visit us at blackstoneproducts.com. That's your portal for everything Blackstone. And until next time, this is Todd. I'm saying praise the Lord and pass the Colorado pronghorn. Mm -hmm.